<clears throat> Shalom. I want to give all the praise and all the glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kadash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth. Also, I want to acknowledge the Akiam who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. All right, and Shalom to the elect. Uh, starting uh, Ecclesiasticus 17 and 1, it says, Yahweh created man of the earth and turned him into it again. He gave them few days and a short time and power also over the things therein. All right, so Yahweh <clears throat> says he gave us few days because this, you know, this is a short time compared to uh, the kingdom, the eternal immortality is a gift that will be given to the, the Israelites. All right. So these days are short, right? He gave them few days and a short time and power also over the things therein. And uh, that includes, um, well, let me keep reading. He endured them with strength by themselves and made them according to his image. All right. And this is dealing with Israelites, okay? We're we're in the image of Yahweh, and real more specifically, the you know Southern Kingdom, the so-called black person, is the is the true image of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, according to the Holy Scripture. Let me see. <clears throat> And put the fear of man upon all flesh and gave him dominion over the beasts and fowls. All right. <clears throat> so according to this, by nature, you know, even the beasts, they're, they're afraid of, uh, of men. Because why? Because we have dominion over the beasts. And this is talking about actual beasts, animals. All right. Let me get a precept in Genesis 9 and 2. Because I, I told you in the past that the beasts are men. But right here in this verse, it was it's actually talking about actual beasts. This is Genesis 9 and 2. It says, And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. All right. So these animals, you know, by nature they're they're you know like you go into the woods or the forest you see a, a you see wildlife, and the wildlife would take off running. It's because of this right here, you know. Unless the Lord puts a spirit on a, on a on a beast or an animal to attack you and kill you, you know, because there's balance involved. But I go back to Ecclesiasticus 17. I'm at verse. I'm okay with verse five. This is an interesting verse right here. It says, "They received the use of the five operations of Yahweh, and in the sixth place he imparted them understanding, and in the seventh speech an interpreter of the cogic cogigations." All right, and uh, I forgot what that word cogitation means. Let me look that up real quick. Actually, look it up on the other phone. It's a little faster. Yeah, that's what it is. The action of thinking deeply about something, contemplation. All right, so unlike these animals, you know, the beasts, the, you know, the, the people, we actually have the ability to cogitate, which is that seventh speech where we can talk and the interpreter of cogitation. So we have deep thinking. We can, and it come, really comes down to these scriptures. You know, in my last lesson, I spoke about dark sayings and, uh, and uh, I forgot what the other one was dark uh, sentences and dark sayings 
You know, the men of Yahweh Bashem Yashar are able to be the interpreters of the cogitations, which are the thinking deeply, because when it comes to this knowledge and this truth, you know, we go deep. You know, we're looking up words. We're, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, literally turning us all into scholars, you know, this, this truth. So that's the, what separates us from these animals is, Verse 5, they received the use of five operations of Yahweh, and in the sixth place he imparted them understanding, and in the seventh speech, an interpreter of the cogitations thereof. So they have, you know, the animals, they have like the five senses, but they're lacking those, you know, they don't, they don't have speech, and they, they don't think deeply about things like we do. See, verse 6, counsel and a tongue and eyes, ears and a heart, gave he them to understand see so we have the ability and a mind to understand things right and it's all through the spirit and power of Yahweh that's why we're able to understand the scriptures is because of Yahweh with all he filled them with the knowledge of understanding and he showed them good and evil right The elder always speaks on his elder talking about how, um, you know, we had to go through this evil so we can appreciate the good when we when we inherit the kingdom. But we have to go through these trials, these tribulations. Acceptable men are made in the furnace of adversity. You see? For Yahweh Bashem Yahshua to even accept us, we first have to be chastised, you know? And that's knowing, showing us good and evil, meaning good times and bad times. We, we got to go through them both. Like I say, to, to appreciate the good, we have to go through the evil. Verse 8. He set his eye upon their minds that he might show them the greatness of his works. See, so Yahweh Bashem Yahshah, he breathed life into us by giving, he breathed life into the men you know, who who are given the understanding of the scripture. This is what life is. See? Just like he did with Adam. Just like he does in uh, Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37, you know, talking about the, the life coming back into the Israelites. Verse, let's see, where am I at? Verse... Nine, he gave them to glory in his marvelous acts forever that they might declare his works with understanding. Okay, so hey, he's given, he's got a group of people according to the scriptures that are going to declare his works with understanding, and that's what's you know, through the spirit, power, and faith in Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. We believe that's what's happening right now that we're, we're the ones declaring his works and with understanding. All right. In the past, people, you know, you were in the modern Christian church, or you were in these other churches, and you were, um, you were declaring his works, but not with understanding. Now it's with understanding. See. Let's see Romans. Romans ten and two comes to mind right away. Right here, talking about the Israelites. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, the Most High, which is zeal is a passion, but not according to knowledge. See, but now we're doing this, we're, we're studying this book according to knowledge. Right? It tells you in uh, Daniel 12 and 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, meaning the scripture, seal, close the book, put a seal on it, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. All right, so that's the knowledge being increased. Because now we're, decla we're declaring the works with understanding. Let me get back to what is it, Ecclesiasticus. Verse 17, I'm sorry, chapter 17, and verse, 
I'm at nine. I'm going to read nine again. It says, He gave them to glory in his marvelous act forever, that they might declare his works with understanding. See, now we're de declaring Yahweh Bashem Yahshai's works with understanding. Ever since we been came across the truth, ever since we the day the truth was presented to us, right? And what comes with the understanding? Verse 10. And the elect shall praise his holy name. All right, so the elect is not everybody, all right? That's why everybody's not praising the, the holy names of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Only the elect are doing this. Only the ones who are chosen to see and accept and receive the true names of the Father and the Son, which is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Only the elect are praising the names. Simple as that. This is prophecy. That's why you have all these other people praising all kinds of different names and uh, titles, but they don't praise the true names. Because why? Because it's only the elect is going to praise his holy name. It tells you right here, Ecclesiastes 17 and 10, and the elect shall praise his holy name. Verse 11. Beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. See? And that word heritage, it goes into like a, uh, an inheritance, okay? That's what it means. A heritage is an inheritance. Like heir, like H-E-I-R, you're an heir, you get an inheritance. It goes right in line with the word heritage. So it's, it's literally going to a seed line. It, it, if um, you go rewind all the way to Genesis and the blessings, the chosen people of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai are the Israelites, then nothing's changed. It's still a heritage. It's still a, an inheritance for a certain people. All right? Heritage. That excludes... When you say heritage, that, that means you're... That doesn't mean every single body, because there everyone pe people are different heritages. See, you have 18 nations according to the Holy Scriptures. All right, and and out of 18 nations, Yahweh by Shem Yahshai chose only one nation, and that's the Israelites, who are you know whereas the sand of the sea we outnumber all of the other nations. And I'm talking about you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, you are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. The chosen people of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Verse 12. He made an everlasting covenant with them and showed them his judgments. See? Who who else did Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai show his judgments to? Nobody but the, the nation of Israel. Let me get a precept in Psalms. I believe it's 147 and 19, maybe. Yeah, this is part of it. Well, yeah, 147, 19, Psalms. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Okay. So he shows his laws and his judgments to who? To his the Israelites. That's how you know it's talking about the Israelites because let me read it again. He's talking about heritage first, right? He says, Ecclesiastes 17 and 11 says, Beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. Gave who? Gave the Israelites. He made, in verse 12, he made an everlasting covenant with them and showed them his judgments. So now well, this tells you who his precept. This tells you who, who did he show his judgments to. Psalm 147, 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob. All right, he shows his word to Jacob, not to Esau. Or else it would say Jacob and Esau. They were brothers. If he showed it to everybody, then why doesn't he put Jacob and Esau right here in verse 19? You Christians, you guys need to answer that. You modern-day Christians, why is only Jacob in this verse 19? He shows his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise 
ye Yahawa. See? Now we're dealing with judgments. See? Only ones who know the judgments of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai are the Israelites. That's why we're prophesying and telling you who's going to be judged, why they're going to be judged, um, in the fashion that they're going to be judged. We, we're able to prophesy because of the Holy Scriptures. Because we're able to understand the dark sayings, the dark uh, sentences, you know, the parables, the metaphors. Through the Holy Spirit, Yahweh has shown Jacob... Not it, not Esau, Jacob. He hasn't dealt with any other nation but Jake. All right. <clears throat> and right now he's not even dealing with the whole nation of Israel. He's dealing with the elect. Right. That's who's appraising his name. We read it in verse ten. Ecclesiastes seventeen and ten it says his the elect is going to praise his name. See verse 13. Their eyes saw the majesty of his glory and their ears heard his glorious voice. Alright. There we saw because it's talking about um, Mount Sinai. When Moses was given the laws, the Israelites, we were and you know it's regeneration, so we we were there in our past life, witnessing the chariots, witnessing the voice coming out of the chariot. You see? That's what this is talking about right here. Let me read it again. Okay, verse 13. It says, Their eyes saw the majesty of His glory, and their ears heard His glorious voice. So, you know what I mean? That I think I just read that. I think it was in the book of Numbers where um, the Israelites were um, hearing the voice of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai through the chariot. And they saw the chariot right over, hovering right over the mountain. And it was, it made it like the mountain looked like it was on fire because of the presence of the chariot, because of the presence of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. See? No other nation was he doing this for, except for the nation of Israel. He didn't come down in the chariot and what you call a UFO and give the law to the Edomites, Esau, the white so-called white people. He didn't do that. He's not Yahweh Bashim Yasha is not dealing with the other nations outside of Israel. And he said unto them, Beware of all unrighteousness. And he gave every man commandment concerning his neighbor. All right? So Yahweh, talking about the law, he gave us the law. And, and he gave you a law on how to conduct yourself with your neighbors too. You see, here in Babylon, those laws are not enforced. Those laws are out the window. Those laws are not in the minds of the people. That's why... That's why adultery happens. That's why, you know, you, you, you have men coveting their, their, their neighbor's wife. And these people are fucking... They have no wisdom. They lack understanding. They're like beasts in the field, right? That's what the scriptures calls them. And, um, I mean, they're, they're liable to just go off and commit all kind of wickedness with your neighbors. See? Verse 15, their ways are before him and shall not be hid from his eyes. Because yeah, Yahweh Shai, he, you know, I mean, Yahweh, he sees, he, he gets report of everything that happens. His angels are, are his messengers. Not only are they everywhere, you know, the, but Yahweh knows what our thoughts are. So how can you, how can you escape anything? Like the scripture says, who can deliver thee out of my hand? Meaning, who can deliver? Well, if you're in the hands of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, who can deliver you from that? Nobody. Verse 16, every man from his youth is given to evil. Neither could they make themselves fleshy hearts for stoning. Right? 
talks about that. It's, I don't remember where, but in the kingdom. Let me see if I can get that verse real quick. All right, let me see. Let me pull this precept out. I'm just Ezekiel 36 and 12. Twenty-six. It says, "A new heart or a new mind will also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them." See. So this is that new heart. This is that new mind he's given us is this truth, able to understand this truth according to knowledge instead of according to the lies we were taught before we were presented this truth, which is, you know, the marvelous light that the scriptures compares it to. Let me see. And, you know, I'm going to actually close out on that. I didn't want to read this whole chapter and, and <clears throat> just going in, you know, on uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 17 and 1. And it's through the Spirit. It tells us that the, the elect are the ones who is going to praise his name and uh, that these other nations, they don't know the judgments of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. This is not their heritage, all right? Let me, let me grab one more precept to close out on Isaiah 54 and 17. It says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of Yahweh, and the righteousness is of me, saith Yahweh. All right? So that's all straight and direct, straight to the point. It says what it says. No weapon can is formed is can, is going to prosper against us. All every tongue that rises against us is going to be, you know, condemned in judgment. Meaning the people that come against us when it comes to this truth, they're going to be condemned. And then it's the heritage of the servants of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, so show, talked about it earlier. It's an inheritance. It's a, uh, it's a, it's we're heirs. It's from a seed line. It goes back to a seed line, a heritage. It goes back to our heritage. You know, the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. We are the ones who are able to be the servants of Yahweh Bashem Shai. and our righteousness not of ourselves. It's of Yahweh. All right. But we're the only ones he's dealing with, man. It's the ones who people are think he wouldn't be dealing with. We're the ones he is dealing with. And it's through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Look around. Is there anybody else who is understanding the scriptures the way we do right now? That's easy because you're around these Christians. They don't know nothing. It's easy to make a Christian look stupid when it comes to these scriptures. And that's not our goal. You know, that's not why we're here. But we're here to defend the gospel and to and to you know teach truth and 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 uh, you know break strongholds you know. But, um, but let me get that verse because that's what we're doing. We're 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 breaking strongholds. Breaking. Deuteronomy. Let me see. Is that the one I want? Yes. Salakia. Yeah, that's what that's what I wanted. Second Corinthians. And I'm gonna close out on this. Second Corinthians ten four and five. Let's read that. 
It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahweh to the pulling down of strongholds. All right? So it's a spiritual battle. It's not carnal. It doesn't mean we're fighting people out on the street. We're not going out there with guns or knives. That's that. That'd be a carnal way of fighting, right? But it's through. A, it's through. Um, but it, our our mighty warfare. And let me read it again. But mighty through the Most High to the pulling down of strongholds. So what we're doing by by with the Holy Spirit dealing with us, we're pulling down these strongholds, meaning wrecking these lies wrecking these philosophies that that the, the scripture doesn't support their philosophy see and it's a heritage to us it's a it's a it's an inheritance the the understanding of this holy bible is an inheritance it belongs to us it belongs to jacob we're the one who is able to you know who able to um understand it better than everybody else see if something's yours, you know, you're going to understand it better. Just like, um, I don't know, the way your car runs, you know, you're going to understand everything about your car. You know, you go in another, someone comes into your car and they're not going to understand. They're going to ask you, oh, where is the, how do I turn the radio on? How do I put the four wheel drive on? How do I, uh, you know, turn the lights off? How do I, they don't know. Because why? It's not theirs. So that's the same thing with the scriptures. They don't know these scriptures. They can't break them down like the elect of the nation of Israel. They can't break it down like us because it's not theirs. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and close out on that. I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, all the love unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekach, Badash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akiam who are pushing this truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom to the elect.